Hi, I'm Cesar Santos and today I'm going to show you how I prepare my pages to be able to paint with oils on them. This is a new sketchbook I recently started working on. I had this made in Italy using Fabriano paper. There is also a company that creates great sketchbooks. I've used them in other videos. They are Steelman and Burn. I'll put the links in the description below if you don't want to go through the whole process of creating a new sketchbook for yourself. Just make sure that whatever sketchbook you select that it has good quality paper that is thick enough to take the gesso and have it, you know, good as a, as a base for painting. So here is how I prepare my pages. I have two types of gesso, clear gesso and white gesso from different brands. This is from Liquitex. The bottom is from Golden. I'm pretty sure if you get a good brand, you will have a fair gesso to use. For this process, you will need the gesso, the sketchbook with good thick paper and a piece of tape and a spatula or a brush, but that's up to you. When I have paintings that are already dried, I put a, a sheet of wax paper and I just put it in between the layers so the, the pages don't stick together. So let's, uh, let's choose this open nice spread to do the gesso. I like to work in pairs. So if I work on this piece right here, I have uh, also room to paint and I can let this dry as I work on the other side. So I'm gonna gesso these two pages today. Think of stretching the paper a little bit before you put the gesso. What I do is I put tape and stretch it and wrap it around. That way the paper is nice and flat. This time I'll be using just this white gesso from Golden and I'm gonna be adding three layers, three thin layers of this gesso onto the paper. It's good that you kind of prepare ahead of time thinking of what you're gonna be painting before you prepare it. That way you're applying the gesso already with intention. I'm preparing these two pages for an instructional video that I will be doing for my website cesarsantos.com where I'll be explaining some color theory with a classical palette to be able to get the flesh color with vibrancy and, and kind of uh, learning from the masters. So that will be up as we see this video and that's what I'm preparing for. So I want to have a nice smooth area and that's why I'm using my palette knife. You can also apply the gesso with a brush, a big brush or whatever you want to use, but you will leave the markings on the gesso when it dries. For this, I want to make sure it's very smooth. That's why I'm using my palette knife and taking away as much gesso as possible so I can leave just a thin layer and then add more layers later. For my style of work, I don't put it all the way to the edges because I don't need to paint all the way. If I, in this case, sometimes I paint all the way to the border, make sure that you put the gesso wherever oil is gonna touch. And the gesso helps to isolate the page because if you paint on the paper with something wet, it will absorb it. You don't want the paper to be absorbing the oil for many reasons and the gesso separates it. And to make sure it separates it, I'm gonna put three layers. So this is gonna be the first one. I don't care that the tapes are there, it's part of the aesthetics in the case of my work, but you can definitely be more neat and don't put tape or put something else or do like a nice straight frame around it. You can get creative with this, but this is the way I do it. Once the first layer is dry, and it will be dry pretty fast because this is water-based and it will dry, you know, within a few, a few minutes. Once that's uh, dry, I'll just go lightly and sand it a little bit. This is a very fine 320 sandpaper. So I just sand it 
just to create some tooth, some texture, so that the second layer grabs well. While the gesso is drying, I go and clean the spatula so that it's ready to be used again and for it to be smooth. Because if pieces of gesso dry, they will create ridges and make it difficult to make a smooth surface. And I'm using the leftovers I'm picking up from this page and putting it here to then work on the other page. This is very simple stuff. Don't be afraid, try it. And by trying it, you'll get the experience for yourself of how much to put and, and how much to sand and all these subtleties you'll get used with time. I'm gonna take out some of these leftovers from the middle here. So that I don't have a problem closing the book afterwards. So all these edges, you can leave them, or take them out, be more careful if you want to. For my, in my case, again, I like it like that organic and just raw. Now that the second layer is dried, I go and do the same routine, sand it again, and apply the last layer. If you want uh, to apply the final layer with brush strokes so that you can create a nice texture, you can try that as well. Depending on what you're gonna paint on top. If you're gonna paint something that you wanna be smooth and don't have anything breaking away or, or uh, kind, of, kind of getting in the way of your brush strokes, then make sure it's flat and smooth. If you wanna create something with impastos and have a lot of organic um, texture, feel free to create the texture at this point too. If you're going to try this on canvas, you can apply the gesso on the canvas as well. Make sure the canvas is sized before being primed. If you want to prepare instead of this acrylic gesso ground, an oil ground can be done with linseed oil and paint or a linseed oil and calcium carbonate and do the same process with the same spatula and apply it on the canvas. Every time I use the spatula, I also go and wash it because gesso gets dry really quick and even this has some old spots of dry gesso. You don't wanna have that. You wanna have a nice clean surface to apply the gesso. So let's do the final layer. Let the final layer begin. <laughs> Sometimes this um, process seems simple once you have done it so many times, but I understand that for many of you, this might be new. I always get questions about how to prepare the paper. You probably thought there was gonna be more to it than this, but no, actually it's pretty simple stuff. So feel free and explore with it. And I also have sketchbooks from years ago that are perfectly in great condition. None of them has cracked or anything by staying in the paper. So this gesso is very flexible and it won't crack as much as uh, the oil ground. Okay, so the paper is prepared. So this is what I call gessoed paper. Let's wrap this up. I want to paint on paper, but I gotta prepare it. I just apply the gesso and share it. 